Hello, this is Linda from No Frills ASMR. I thought today we could look through this little book. It just seemed like it would be fun. It's called Who Knew? Things You Didn't Know About Things You Know Well. And it just has like little random facts, which I thought might be fun to look at. But before that, I thought I'd show you um, our local library has a book sale. Um, they call it the book seller. Get it? <laughs> and um, they have books for inexpensive. Um, so this book was two dollars, and all the money goes towards the library. It's like a volunteer thing. But I bought some other ones. <clears throat> I thought I'd show you um, this one. I'm pretty excited about I just love Molly Shannon I think she's a ball of energy and joy and I heard her on a podcast once talking about her childhood um and I just was like I want to read this book and then I kind of forgot about it so I saw it there at the bookseller for two dollars and uh thought I'd pick it up I'll just read you the first sentence at age four Molly Shannon's world was shattered when she lost her mother, baby sister, and cousin in a car accident with her father at the wheel. Oh my God. Held together by her tender and complicated relationship with her grieving father, Molly and her sister Mary were raised in a permissive household where Molly's gift for improvising and role-playing blossomed alongside the fearlessness that would lead her to become a celebrated actress. I just think it sounds really good. And in the middle, there's some pictures of her family and her. And if you don't know who she is, she was a, um, she was on Saturday Night Live and she was absolutely hilarious. She played um, Mary, what was her name? Mary Margaret. She was so funny. But then she also, like recently, I think she was on, what was that show on HBO where they're at a resort? And she played the mother, the like overbearing mother. But she's been on a lot of stuff lately. Um, but I think she's great. And she's just the most positive person under the hardest circumstances. I mean, she's sort of inspirational. I think she's awesome. So anyway, I wanted to read this. And I haven't really been reading as much lately for unknown reasons. <laughs> I don't know. So I got this because I thought maybe it'll get me back into reading. And then I just got this because it seemed like something fun. Um, Marvelous Monikers, the people behind more than 400 words and expressions. Why is that cramp called a Charlie horse? Why are we always trying to keep up with the Joneses? Why is that pest called a goody two-shoes. Who was the original Don Juan? When we fling a frisbee, whose name goes flying? So it's just kind of like facts about different things, which I always find kind of interesting to look at. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. I didn't really, I haven't looked at it much, but this one was $2 too as well. And then I got this Stuff You Should Know book for $2. I'm not really, I, I listen to this podcast a lot. I do like it a lot. I like Josh and Chuck. But um, I'm not sure exactly what this book is all about. What's in here? I haven't looked at it, but I think it'll be fun to look at. The 1970s were awesome, and here's proof. What do they say about cars? You had two choices. Lot, bleh, bleh. Land yachts like the Chrysler Imperial LeBaron, we had one of those, and the Cadillac Fleetwood 60 Special, both of which you didn't so much parallel park as dock to the port side. <laughs> yeah, true. Or a small bubble shaped compact car like the AMC Pacer or the Ford Pinto, which blew up if you rear ended. Oh, yeah, we should do a <laughs> one of these on the Ford Pinto. It was like a small car, <laughs> and they put the, I 
think it, I think I'm this off the top of my head, but I think they put the engine in the trunk. But if you got rear ended, it would blow up. So that was bad. Yeah, so this will be fun. Whoops, this could be fun to look at. It might give me, you know, ideas for um, cyanide pills, right? Things to talk about. The Jersey Devil. Who is the monster of the Pine Barrens? I have no idea what that's about. Demolition Derbies. Oh my gosh. When I was a kid, we'd go to the state fair and my dad would always want to go to the Demolition Derbies. And then as an adult, my husband's friend, well, a guy we were, because of circumstances, close to. <laughs> He's kind of crazy. But, um... He and his girlfriend would drive cars in the demolition derby. It was crazy. They were they were wild, wild, wild. Still are, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a trillionaire. The scum manifesto. The world without men would be killer. Oh well, I don't know about that. Um. The Scotland Yard Crime Museum. Nothing to see here. Yeah, so, oh, Jack Kevorkian, he's from my hometown. Dr. Death and the Meaning of Life. Yeah. He was a big deal in the, I think it was late 70s, early 80s. He was from where I was, and I remember it was, oh, it was all in the news. It was such a big deal. All right. So that looks interesting. That was $2. And then this one was two dollars, or yeah, two dollars. And what's kind of neat about this? It says we interrupt this broadcast to hear the actual broadcast on two audio CDs. So they have. Let's see, will I be able to open this, or is it too big for my? Where are my cameras? Hold on. Oh, sorry. So it has like, you know, things that just all these Kennedy assassination. Um, <clears throat> Martin Luther King Jr. assassination, Nixon resigns, Apollo 13 astronauts escape disaster. That's interesting. Um, whoops. Saigon Falls, the Challenger explodes. I remember this so clearly. I was homesick that day. I was lying on the couch watching. I was like, what just happened? And all my friends, they showed it at school in the classroom, but I was home. Rodney King verdict, I remember that so clearly. All these events, it's like, gosh. Anyway, in here they have, um, oh yeah, Waco. That was a disaster earlier, wasn't it? Um, O.J. Simpson, yeah. So they have all these kind of interesting stories, but what's pretty neat, it comes with these two CDs. And I still have a CD player, you know, on my Highlander. So you can listen to the live broadcast of the event. Whoops. Um, so I thought maybe I'm going to be driving down to my parents. Oh, gosh. In Tennessee soon. So I thought I might listen to these on the way, you know, for something to do. It's a long drive. <laughs> Is that totally like nerd? <laughs> now you know. Now you know what I mean. Nerd. Okay, I got this. Um, I actually bought this at uh, a different store, but... Oops, sorry. Gosh, I keep hitting the camera. It was also only a couple bucks, but um, it's this... Something I would never use generally, but I love it when people on videos mess around with, like, collections and this kind of stuff. And... It's like a plastic coated page with paper and then you put your thing on the paper. <laughs> and I think what I'm going to do, my husband kept all of his concert tickets from the 80s, 70s and 80s. I did not save things. I have none of mine. And I saw Madonna and Janet Jackson <laughs> and uh, i trying to think of other big shows. That's probably the two biggest. But um. He saved all his, so I thought I might put all his tickets in this booklet one day for something to do on here. It would be kind of fun. <laughs> but I don't know how you stick them on without, because you wouldn't be able to take them off and look at both sides. So I have to look into that. I've never scrapbooked or anything like that. It's not my... 
cup of tea generally. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> okay. And then this one's so big, I will not be able to open this, but I got this giant world atlas. And it just looks super interesting because it has all kinds of information about the world in it. And I thought this could be fun to look at. And it was only $4, which seemed like a bargain, even though it's out of date. <laughs> but, you know, it's pretty cool. It's got all kinds of neat stuff in it. So anyway, that's it. Those are the books I bought. I'm, uh, you know, like I need more books. And, I actually sold a ton of books not that long ago to um, Half Price Books. And anything they didn't take, I just donated but, um, I don't know, I just wanted some new stuff to look at. So, I thought we could just take a look-see at this for a few minutes. Um, I don't know what it will be in here. I didn't really look at it. I think I'm going to take this cover off. So, it's like this. Let's see. This was published in 2000. And any facts that are wrong in here? If jello is hooked up to an EEG, it registers movement virtually identical to the brainwaves of a healthy adult. <laughs> that makes me question if EEGs are really doing anything. If jello gets the same reaction as a healthy adult. Hmm. I don't know. The original Twinkies filling was banana. It was replaced by vanilla-flavored cream during World War II when the United States experienced a banana shortage. Huh. Interesting. I guess. On average, a Twinkie will explode in a microwave in 45 seconds. Wow. There are seven loops in the squiggle atop every hostess cupcake. Oh my gosh. When I was a kid, <clears throat> I had a friend... Sia, who her mom would always pack her a hostess cupcake, and my mom would pack me like an apple or a bag of carrots, <laughs> something disgusting. <laughs> so I would trade, and, and Sia wanted the healthy stuff, it was crazy. <laughs> I was like, yes, I will trade you this apple for that hostess cupcake. And then my mom found out, and she was like, that's right. There are approximately 1,750 O's in every can of spaghetti O's. 1,750. Hmm. I'm not a big oh, spaghetti O's, eh? There are 1,218 peanuts in a single 28 ounce jar of Jif peanut butter. Okay. These are like good trivia facts if you ever go play trivia. What's that kind of thing they ask? <laughs> How many? How many peanuts? Peanut butter was invented by St. Louis physician Ambrose Straub, who, concerned about the nutrition of his elderly toothless patients, concocted a health food product that was high in protein and easily digestible. I question this fact. I thought it was a, um, oh, what's his name? I don't know. I need to look that up. Ambrose Straub. I feel like it was a somebody more like known. I want to look that up now. I don't know about that one. Peanut butter's high protein content draws moisture from your mouth, which is why in the end it always sticks to the roof of your mouth. In the end, they couldn't get the rights to use the actual <laughs> McDonald's. 100 shares of McDonald's stock purchased for 2250 when first offered in 1965 was worth more than 1.4 million in 1995. Wow. Wow, wow. I don't know. Do we want to read all the McDonald's facts? McDonald's milkshakes contain seaweed in the form of an extract called carrageenan, a thickener with emulsifier that keeps the butter fat in the shake from separating out. Well, a lot of things have that. 
And I know it's seaweed, but I've heard, I don't know, might not be that good for you. <clears throat> the biggest menu flops at McDonald's include kolaki, a bohemian pastry that had been found, that had been founder Ray Kroc's mother's specialty, and the Hoofa burger, which was aimed at vegetarians, as well as Catholics who didn't eat fish on Fridays and consisted of two slices of cheese and a grilled pineapple ring on a toasted bun. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, have you ever seen that movie with um, Michael Keaton, the founder? It's all about Ray Kroc, I think. That's good. I love Michael Keaton, though, so maybe I'm biased. McDonald's teaches its employees... Okay, wait, about Michael Keaton... <laughs> If you haven't seen it, there is a show, I think it's on, I think it's on Hulu, called Dope Sick, and Mike, and it's about drug addiction, so if that is a problem, don't watch it, but, um, Michael Keaton is so good in that show, I mean, he, there is this one moment, uh, I'll just say it's at a rehab center, and he says something to a guy who comes to visit him that, like, I had to rewind it and watch it like 10 times because I just thought he was so amazing in that. Anyway, McDonald's teaches its employees that the fastest way to put out a shortening fire is to dump frozen french fries on it. Really? Huh. Well, I will tell you, if you ever have a grease fire in your kitchen, uh, put baking soda on it. That will put it. Some fast food chains spray sugar on their potatoes, which caramelizes during cooking and gives the fries a golden color. I mean, I know people would be like, ah, they put sugar, but it, I think it kind of burns off. It's like people do that with onions to caramelize them too. That looks way too long. I'm not reading all that. Or is it really good? Hold on. Let me skim it. If it's really good, I'll, I'll do another one and read it. Uh, the original package of M&M's contained brown, yellow, orange, red, green, and violet colored candies. Well, what does it have now? It has brown, yellow, orange, red, and green, right? I think it still has all those, so it's just the violet. Violet was dropped in favor of tan. Yeah, what's with the tan? Oh, I'd rather have Violet. In 1949, the red ones were also taken out of the mix. Yeah, I remember that. My mother would not let us eat red food coloring, like, at all. <laughs> the red ones were also taken out of the mix in 1976, but not because they contained red dye number two. Rather, it was because company officials were afraid that customers would think they did. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um... Yeah, for a while, red dye number two was, um, you know, enemy number one. <laughs> Lifesavers got their signature shape by accident when the machine employed to press out a standard circular mint malfunction, inadvertently punching a hole in each. Ah, that's funny. Lifesavers. I used to love butter rum and peppermint. Those were my two favorite flavors. My uncle would always get us the Lifesavers um, storybook for Christmas growing up. And those were the ones. And then they had wintergreen in there. And I hate wintergreen. Don't like it at all. So I'd give that to my brother. <laughs> the Hershey's Kiss got its name from the puckering sound made by the manufacturing equipment as chocolate was dropped onto the conveyor belt during the production process. Hmm. Coca-Cola bottle. I can recognize it just by its shape. Coca-Cola was first marketed as the best cure for hangover. <laughs> and early production contained trace amounts of coca leaves, which, when processed, render cocaine. Yeah. 7-Up included lithium carbonite in its original recipe. Well, it would help if they told me what 
<laughs> lithium carbonate. Dom Perignon, the man commonly recognized for perfecting the process of both making and bottling champagne, was a Benedictine monk. Wow. I didn't know that. Hmm. That's an interesting fact. I don't think I'm going to read all that. Is this a separate one? Okay. While making cookies for her hotel guest one evening, Ruth Wakefield lacked the powdered cocoa called for in the recipe, so she substituted tiny bits of chopped chocolate in its place. Unexpectedly, the chocolate pieces did not melt in baking, but rather held their shape, softening only slightly to a creamy texture. She served the cookies anyway, naming them Toll House after the inn she owned. Sometimes I think that story, if she baked a lot... She would know the chocolate wouldn't melt and mix in. She'd know she'd have to pre-melt it. And I feel like it's not giving her enough credit. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Maxwell House was a luxury hotel in Nashville, Tennessee, known for its coffee. Huh. Didn't know that. It's going to skip. The flavor we think of as bubblegum, I do like bubblegum, is a combination of wintergreen, vanilla, and cassia, a form of cinnamon. Really? Because I hate wintergreen. Huh. I have never heard that. Wintergreen, vanilla, and cassia. Hmm. The canning process for herring was developed in Sardinia, which is why canned herrings are better known as sardines. I never knew that. So herrings, sardines are herrings? Hmm. I do eat sardines by force. <laughs> My husband insists because they're really good for you and I say I want omega-3s. So he's like, eat the sardines. Because they're so small, they don't tend to pick up like heavy metals like bigger fish would. So I suffer through them. Wedding cake was originally thrown at the bride and groom instead of eaten. But wait, I gotta go back. Wedding cake was originally thrown at the bride and groom instead of eaten by them. Well, that's fun. <laughs> Can you imagine? You paid all that money for the dress and your hair and your makeup. I guess maybe that's why couples like will take a little cake and put it on each other's face. Maybe that's a tradition. I never thought about it. A chef's hat is tall and balloons at the top so as to counteract the intense heat in the kitchen. The unique shape allows air to circulate around the scalp, keeping the head cool. Hmm. I've never heard that. I have heard this one. Before attending the Cordon Bleu, did I read that again? Before attending, yeah. Before mastering the art of French cooking, Julia Child did intelligence work for the Office of Strategic Services in India and China during World War II. I remember hearing that. I can't remember. Was that in that movie, Julie and Julia? Is that the name of the movie? That was a good movie. It was nice. I read the book, too, actually. The Five Interlocking Olympic Rings. Oh, I'm going to do one on this, so maybe I shouldn't read it. Let me see what it says. Don't look. All right, we'll do it. It's going to give it away a little something. The five interlocking Olympic rings are black, blue, red, white, and yellow because at least one of these colors appears on every national flag. Wow. Isn't that cool? It's a good fact. It's a fun fact. <clears throat> I should have brought some water up with me. I'm thirsty. I made, I made, um, experimentally, I made Indian like I just, out of, out of my white girl head came up with what I think Indian food is. It was good though. <laughs> but I think I oversalted it maybe because I'm thirsty. One of the highest priced single purchases ever charged to an American Express card was $2.5 million for a painting by Roy, Roy Lichtenstein. Lich 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 
Hmm. I don't know if I said that right. The original. <laughs> I said that wrong. The original American Express card was purple and was for 11 years until the green card replaced it in 1969. Well, now it's blue, I think. Or, it's, or platinum. <laughs> Isn't that what they have? A platinum. I don't know. <laughs> Mine's blue and kind of see-through. And I got it because I had a Costco membership. <laughs> Banks are commonly shaped like pigs because in the 18th century, frugal people saved their money in earthenware jars made of dense orange clay known as pig. <gasps> wow, never heard that. Going back to American Express, I remember I had a great aunt, 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 <clears throat> who liked to flaunt her wealth, even though I don't know that she was really that wealthy, but she liked to look that way either way. And it used to be with American Express, you had to pay a yearly payment to have the card. And so she would always say to me, you should always have an American Express so people know you have money. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> but I remember when I was real little, I was so like impressed because, you know, my parents weren't like that. But she was always dressed like with fur and <laughs> fancy makeup. And I was always like, oh my gosh. <laughs> The dollar sign, okay, is a combination of the letters P and S. I've never heard this. PS being the abbreviation for pesos, the principal coin in circulation in the United States in 1794 when we began marketing our own dollars. Wow. I never heard that. Wow, they have a lot. What's that on sale then? Let me go back. Hmm. When the gray exterior of the presidential mansion was painted white to cover the fire damage caused by British forces in the War of 1812, the change in color brought along a change in name to the White House. Interesting. Actually, I should... Washington, D.C. is kind of an interesting subject. See, everything I look at makes me think of other things. <laughs> Portrait artist James Whistler decided to paint his mother when the person who had scheduled an appointment with him failed to show. Huh, I wonder if that's one of his famous paintings. I don't know. The man who commissioned the Mona Lisa refused it. Oh. So he commissioned it to be painted. It was painted, and then he went, I don't like it. <laughs> As a person who does art-type things for a business, um, this is why a lot of artists won't take custom orders or commission for that exact reason. You do all the work, and then the person either doesn't want to pay or doesn't show up or changes their mind. And so I think a lot of artists are getting more and more like, I'm not interested in custom work. <laughs> Big Ben is not a clock, but the 13-ton bell inside the clock tower of England's House of Parliament. Oh, Big Ben is the 13-ton bell inside the clock tower in the House of Parliament. I did not know that. And I, and I walked right by it and looked at it. But I didn't, I probably did know. Probably somebody told me and I went, oh, okay. I forgot. <clears throat> The flashing warning light atop the Capitol Records Tower in Hollywood also spells out H-O-L-L-Y-W-O-O-D in Morse code. Huh. The idea of painting fingernails originated in China where the color of someone's nails indicated their social rank. The first piece of Tupperware was a bathroom tumbler and was sold only in department stores. A bathroom tumbler. So just like a, a cup for your bathroom to drink out of. I think we had one of those, actually, now that I think about it. Because it was 
<laughs> I think we had it for a while and then my mom went and got Dixie cups, the little tiny Dixie cups they used to sell because she thought it was gross that like people would share a cup. <laughs> the microwave was born when an engineer testing a magnetron tube noticed that the radiation leaking from it had caused the chocolate bar in his pocket to melt. Oh God. I hate to where was that pocket? I hope it wasn't too close to anything else because trouble. A book of maps is called an atlas <clears throat> because early editions commonly featured a picture of Atlas carrying the world on his shoulders on the cover. According to author L. Frank Baum, the name Oz was thought up when he looked at his filing cabinet and noticed one drawer marked A through G, a second one tagged H through N, and a third labeled O through Z. Oz. That's cute. I never heard that. Eric Siegel, the author of Love Story, was one of the screenwriters of Yellow Submarine. <laughs> Here are two things probably no one's hardly heard of or seen anymore. Cinderella has been made into a movie more than any other story. If that's still true, because this book is 23 years old, that's a trivia. That's something that will come up in trivia. Or on Jeopardy. I watch Jeopardy almost every night, if I can, if I'm home. Because I don't have, you know, a thing to uh, record it. It's just on the antenna. <laughs> but I try to watch it every from, nobody's going to know that, that's too old. The sight of oranges in all three Godfather films signal that death, or a close call, is about to happen. Hmm. I feel like I remember hearing this one time, but I've never, like, looked at it while it's playing. I don't know. Director Wes Craven named Freddy Krueger after a kid who bullied him in school. <laughs> Burt Reynolds was cast as Han Solo in Star Wars, but dropped out before filming began. Huh. The title role in Beetlejuice was written for Sammy Davis Jr. Well, that would be interesting. I told, speaking of Michael Keaton, <clears throat> wasn't he Beetlejuice? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All of the still photos of Forrest Gump picture... All of the still photos of Forrest Gump picture him with his eyes closed. <clears throat> In Pulp Fiction, the word F U D D K is used 257 times. Yeah, I believe that. <clears throat> if that bothers you, don't watch Pulp Fiction. But if you don't care about that, Pulp Fiction's awesome. <laughs> I can totally understand some people might not like it. Marilyn Monroe developed her signature walk by hacking off the heel of one shoe. Huh? Did she have like a limp? Wait, what? Huh. Maybe I don't know her signature walk by hacking. That would be like near impossible. I don't buy that. I think this is a, this feels fake. <laughs> Oscar winner Tommy Lee Jones was the college roommate, Harvard, class of 69, of Vice President Al Gore. I think I remember hearing that. You know what? <clears throat> I recommend a movie. Ding, ding, movie recommendation. Tommy Lee Jones and, um, oh shoot, what's his name? The guy who had a medical emergency recently. And he was in the hospital. Oh my gosh. Jamie Foxx. Our, um... In a movie, it's on, I think, Amazon Prime. Well, this is a terrible recommendation, because I can't think of the name of the movie. <laughs> it's like something to do with law. It's like lawyer. It's like... Anyway, I'll try to put the name in the description if I remember. But um, Tommy Lee Jones is like 
owns a owns a um a chain of like graveyards I guess that's not right funeral homes and he this guy's trying I forget the whole story but anyway he goes to Jamie Foxx who's a lawyer and hires him to be his lawyer and it's just a good story it's just a fun it's not like a great movie like the best movie of the year but it's a fun good movie I thought and as my recollection is I think you could watch it with like kids like teenage kids I think I don't remember there being anything bad in it but you could double check that the signature line drawing of Alfred Hitchcock's profile was drawn by Alfred Hitchcock huh they should have it here it's like his nose it's just like a pencil drawing of his face the stabbing sound the knife makes in the shower scene in Psycho is in fact the sound of a knife stabbing a melon. Yeah, that's interesting. They, um, my son just graduated with like a film degree and, you know, they do that Foley work where all you do is make the sounds like of crinkling leaves under your feet or tip tapping of a cat walking across a floor and they use all these different things to make the sounds that's pretty interesting house flies hum in the key of f <laughs> what? cats have two sets of vocal cords hmm. tigers have striped skin not just striped fur <laughs> yeah i think i've seen that the venus flytrap feeds primarily on ants not flies <laughs> the female praying mantis chews her partner's head off during mating <laughs> I chew my partner's head off sometimes too <laughs> each instance of dog poop that goes unscooped attracts approximately 144 flies gross this is why I can't there's like a picnic and there are flies and stuff I'm like because I watched the movie The Fly <laughs> and the fly like eats stuff and then barfs it back up it's gross the number of cricket chirps you count in a 15 second interval plus 37 will tell you the current temperature now this is something we used to do all the time as a kid we would count it up and then you count 37 <sighs> And it's fun to do, and I recommend doing it with kids. And you'll always be right, because, you know, everybody's going to count a little bit different. <laughs> so you're within 10 degrees, and that's usually pretty close. Bulls, bulls are colorblind and cannot see red. It is the bright color and motion of the cape that causes them to charge. Hmm. All right, guys, well... water and then I might cuddle up in bed early and start looking at this book. If any of you have read this, let me know what you thought. I hope it's good. Of course, it's only $2, so worst case scenario, if it's not, I just go, oh well. <laughs> but it looks like it's going to be good. All right. Well, I'll flip through these pages a little bit. Say bye now.